How dirty is that keyboard? <laughs> and fairly useless as well, look at that. Um, hi, how are you? I'm, um, I'm back. Mainly because I have to say, uh, of your very kind comments. Um, yeah, basically that's it. So I thought I'd give it another go. Technically, I'm not hugely with it at the moment. This is an iPad with just an iPad mic. You know, the standard plug-in thing, earphone mic. But I thought I'd give it a go and see what happens. Um, I have got a video camera. I've got another microphone, but I'm not sure how to set it all up. So I just thought I'd have a quick festive look at this because looking at literature, and it cost me five pounds. Um, and it's a Christmas Carol, of course, adapted by David Edgar. Uh, David Edgar's an interesting writer. Um, I kind of know him a little bit. I mean, I can't say he's a best friend. He really waves if he sees me. Uh, <laughs> uh, and he's, I'm sure he won't mind me saying, a bit of a big brain. Uh, he was also involved in setting up the very first master's degree in playwriting at the University of Birmingham. <coughs> Excuse me. And a couple of my friends uh, did that. I didn't. I'm not even sure if I applied. I thought about it, but I didn't. But I've actually written a version of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. This is, as I say, the OIC's version. Um, and this year, which be 2019, it's toured uh, all over the UK, my version. And in fact, it even went to America. So I'm kind of sort of into this. That keyboard really is disgusting, isn't it? Oh, I'm not used to seeing it so close up. Anywho, this is a beautiful uh, production by Nick Hearn Books, adapted by David Edgar. I won't go through it too much because of the copyright elements to David's work, but there are some elements, of course, that... Uh, will never change. But I just thought I'd show you this, because if you know the story, or you've seen the Muppets Christmas Carol, <laughs> you'll know about this. This is a bit about David Edgar, born into a theatre family, as it says. Took up writing full-time in 1972. Oh yes, and there it mentions he founded Britain's first graduate playwriting course at the University of Birmingham, of which he was director for 10 years. Um, state adaptations, fairly famous one, uh, Nicholas Nickleby, both for the RSC. And Jail Diary. He's done biographies, uh, Julian Barnes, Arthur and George at Birmingham Repertory Theatre. I think, I'm not sure if John Adams was running the theatre there. John Adams is a very uh, smart and lovely theatre director. Uh, and then Ibsen's The Master Builder at Chichester Festival Theatre. I'm ironically one of the <coughs> artistic directors from Birmingham went to Chichester uh, after a while. He's also written these two community plays for Dorchester. Um, yeah, so Dorchester the Revolution and um, Playing with Fire for the National Theatre. Out of joint a great writing company. And the Minerva Theatre in Chichester is lovely as well. And How Plays Work, which I've actually not read. But I thought I ought to. I might have to at some point. And this, of course, is about the Royal Shakespeare Company. Or well, actually, most people think of the Shakespeare Theatre um, as the company. And of course, it's not. It's the company that is at the Shakespeare Memorial Theatre, which opened in Stratford in um, 1879. Um, I had one of my adaptations of Shakespeare, not actually at the Memorial Theatre, but at the Waterside Theatre, which is sort of almost over the road from it for a summer back in, when was it, 90 something or other. Um, so I ended up living there for the whole summer. It's a lovely part of the world, Stratford upon Avon. And this talks a bit about the RSC, the founding principles, the company would embrace the freedom of Paris Shakespeare's work, train and develop young actors and directors and crucially experiment in new ways of making theatre and um, the homecoming in old times by Howard Pinter. This is an, an element of the RSC that's not really known much about, everybody knows that he does kind of Shakespeare, but the other place 
it was a tin hat on Waterside, just down from where my play was. Um, Buzz Goodbody, who I didn't know, I don't know, well, I'm not that old. But there were some great, um, great things came out of the Royal Shakespeare Company. You might not know, uh, but if you've ever seen the film of, by Willie Russell, Shirley Valentine, or um, Educating Rita, they were both a result of commissions from the Royal Shakespeare Company. Uh, Erica Wyman reopened the other place. Uh, and it's, I've not been for a while, but it's, a, it's kind of like a cool thing to do. Uh, and then a bit more about some of the plays, playwrights that the RSC have worked with. Edward Albee, Howard Barker, I quite like his political stuff. Well, it's nearly all political, isn't it? <laughs> Edward Bond, I saw the premiere of The Sea. Howard Brenton, Howard Brenton's done some good stuff as well. Uh, Howard Brinton wrote a collection of books. If you're into theatre and you need small casts, have a look for his, I think it's called actually Plays. Is it Plays for the Poor Theatre? I must have a look. Um, oh, scratch me. Uh, was it the, uh, the Education of Skinny Spew? Christie in Love. Um, yeah, there's some good, it's, it's a good, I haven't read it again for years, but um, I remember thinking I might do those soon. And I've got a small idea about doing something in London might use those people. Mark Ravenhill, of course, known for his shopping and hoarding. <laughs> it was actually shopping and fucking, but of course when it first went touring, they had to put asterisks and stars where the, where the title was. Uh, Peter Wynne's great. Roy Williams, I love Roy Williams. He's, he's written some really kind of good, um, earthy stuff as well. Uh, Gregory Duran, of course, who's one in the RSC as artistic director today. Um, Kenneth Branagh, of course, you may know Kenneth Branagh, the famous actor. He, <coughs> excuse me, famously was at the Royal Shakespeare Company when Trevor Nunn was in charge. Um, and uh, Kenneth Branagh talks about being trevved. <laughs> I think Ken Branagh, because it's it's quite a slog. When the year I was at the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, uh, sorry, at Stratford upon Avon. The actors arrived and they were all full of joy and glory because, of course, they were at the Royal Shakespeare Company, you know, one of the most famous theatres in the world. We opened our show, we were there for the whole summer, but we opened ours a couple of weeks before they arrived, the new cast, the new season, um, in the spring. And, of course, they were so excited to get there, but within about four weeks you couldn't find an actor on a Saturday night because, of course, Stratford's lovely, but like most small places in Warwickshire or anywhere else in the world, there's not a whole lot to do, apart from a theatre. <laughs> and of course, as you're all working at the theatre, there's not a whole lot to do apart from go to the pub. I um, I do know the late night pubs that are full of actors, but I'd better not mention that here, had I? No. Uh, and then this talks about the new work at the Royal Shakespeare Company. Um, I, <sighs> with actors and creative teams, I, really, I do like the Royal Shakespeare Company, but it's a bit like the the National Theatre in the United Kingdom. It's still fairly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little bit exclusive. We are trying to change that, and I say we because I'm a working class kid. We left school at 15 with no qualifications, and it's taken me years and years and years to do what other people could have done quite easily. I didn't go to university till I was 50. Yes, I am the dealt. Uh, so there are people now, and even the Arts Council of England are saying they're trying to address that imbalance. But um, it's still there. So this was first performed 27th of November, as it says, 2017 at the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, Stratford upon Avon, with this um, cast, uh, one or two of whom I know, uh, but not many. Um, Boy Scrooge. I mean, I should say that mine is a tiny, my adaptation is. It's a tiny, tiny cast. I did it with four people initially, and I'm now doing it with one, <laughs> which is a bit of a giveaway. And Rachel Kavanagh, Rachel Kavanagh, of course, ran, uh, I'm sure that she ran Birmingham Rep for a while, although I moved to London, and so I haven't had a whole lot to do with the lovely Rep for a while. You can become a member or a patron to support the RSC. I was. I'm not now, so I'm a bit too poor. Uh, and if they worry about me, you know, using their book, <laughs> then at least we can say we've given them a free plug. And this, of course, is Her Majesty the Queen. 
was the patron, as it was ever thus. Um, and uh, David Tennant, of course, actor Russell Beale, he's a very good actor as well. Papa Ressi was great, he did a fantastic thing with a version of um, Hamlet. Um, um, I did a version of Hamlet at the Edinburgh Festival a couple of years ago, which went well. Gregory Doyne, of course. Uh, <coughs> I think when the Royal Shakespeare Company first started, there was a bit of competition between them and the National. And it was really Peter Hall's idea, Sir Peter Hall, who wanted to create this company. And um, Peter Hall's an interesting character because he did go to Cambridge, but he was the son of a railway signalman. So his credentials weren't hugely privileged. And then this is A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens, of course, adapted by the stage uh, by David Edgar. He um, credits Rachel there, the director, before she wrote it. Um, that's the dedication, which is always a lovely thing that you can do as a writer, dedicate your play to someone. The characters and their ages, the sort of breakdown, so you can see it covers a fair amount of time uh, with a fair amount of cast. I mean, I look at this and I just think, oh, what would I give to have the budget to be able to employ all these people? And um, there's the children there. Topper. Topper's a great character. I don't know if you know Topper. I don't think he was in the Disney one. I'm not sure. But he's a great, funny character. I have a lot of fun with Topper. Um, and this is... David's play, so I'll kind of stop here because I think this is obviously his his property, uh, you know, his kind of copyright. But it is available in all good bookshops. Nick um, does a lot of great stuff if you like theatre or scripts. Marley was dead. Uh, that's the, some of them, one of the most interesting opening lines. Oh, and on that note, I shall um, say goodbye please let me know if you like this because it's the only reason i'm back here after all this time is your comments um and please let me know if you think i should get a new keyboard and like it as well if you if you can i hope the sound's okay i'm gonna have a listen now merry christmas and a happy new year or to quote shakespeare i mean to quote charles dickens god bless us all everyone